Excellent. So welcome to everyone. I am so excited to see you here today. Um, if you have not, uh, if I have not had the pleasure yet of meeting you, uh, my name is Mindy Stern. I have been uh, hosting the Accelerated Job Seeker Calls for several years now, and we actually started almost five years ago, right when the pandemic started. Um, we formed a very small group. We started with about six people and we had calls every single week uh, for about a year and a half. Um, that was almost five years ago now. And we're up to over 650 members of our private LinkedIn group. Uh, if you are not yet a member, please uh, connect with me and ask me to uh, invite you to the group. We'd love to have you there. And Lori's going to put um, a link into the chat so you can go directly there and request to be invited. It's a private group. But if you join that group, you get first dibs on all of our Accelerator events. And I'll tell you what's coming up in December so you can prepare for that and, and register for it because it's really going to be a great one. Um, if, you, if today is your first day coming to an Accelerator event, would you mind just putting a number one in the chat? so we can welcome you properly. Karen Lim, welcome. Shreya, welcome. Uh, Coach Taz, Lisa, Jess, Patty, Joanne, Michelle, Eric, Laura, and Jeff. Welcome, Mark and Dan, Julie McAllister, Bob Longo, Parul Patel. Wow, we have a lot of first timers. Sam, I think they're here to honor you. And I think uh, AI is a very hot topic. What do you think? Both, both. In 200 meters, use the right two lanes to turn right onto William R. Allen Road North. Oh, oh cool. whoever is driving, I can hear your GPS. So if you could uh, put yourself on mute, that would be amazing and perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so next month, um, we are welcoming Brenda Miller. Many of you know Brenda, and she is going to share all the pro tips <laughs> that you need to know to get ready for 2025. Um, and so the date is Tuesday, December 10th. Again, we always do it at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, so if you would like to register for that, Lori's going to put that date into your, into, your, um, into your chat, and you can register right from there. And registration is open right now. What we like to do on the on the accelerator group calls is we always love to share information. And so I'm going to be jotting down notes as Sam is talking so that we can create a post for tomorrow where I will share some of the best nuggets that we hear. So if you hear something that you think is particularly interesting or that others might want to learn from, just put that nugget right into the chat and I'll grab those later and create a post from them. Thank you so much. Sam is going to uh, be doing a couple of things. Number one, he is going to be doing a short PowerPoint just to give you some context of AI for those of you who are not too familiar with it, but he's going to get you ready to really <laughs> blossom with AI because it's so important right now for in the job market. And then he's going to do some uh, a demonstration of some case studies. And we have one person who volunteered to share all of her information, and he's going to show you how to do that. And Sam is also um, absolutely open to hearing questions. So if you have a question that you want Sam to answer, I'm going to ask you to just raise your hand like this. Um, mine is in my more. Some people have it in their breakout. But if you could take a look and just see where your hand is, because that will bring you up to the top of the screen. And if you could see your hand, raise hand, just do that real quick right now. So we all know where it is in case, Julie, your, <laughs> your virtual hand. There you go. Karen got it. David got it. Jeff got it. Michelle got it. Sandra got it. Okay. If you want to ask a question, that's what you'll do. By the way, and you'll see how you raise to the top of the screen. It's a manual. You have to lower your hand when you're done, okay? But that's how we will find you and that's how we will uh, answer your questions. Excellent. So when I was searching for the right person to teach us 
um, how to use AI to accelerate the job search, I reached out to my network, which is what we should all be doing, right? Reaching out to our network when we need something. And um, I was so fortunate because Terry immediately said, you need to talk to Sam Ballou. Um, and he was right. Once I heard that Sam was not only an AI expert, but a recruiter who uses AI on a daily basis to find people, I knew he was going to be the right speaker for us. So I'm so excited to introduce Sam today. Sam, um, where are you? Let's get Sam into a, a speaker pose so we can highlight him and he can get started. There we go. Hey, Sam, how are you doing? Great, Mindy. Thank you very much. appreciate the opportunity. Um, of course. We're so excited to have you here. Anything uh, you want to share with the group? Platform is yours, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm an agency recruiter for the past 25 years, uh, mostly in IT. And I use these tools on a daily basis. Um, my goal this year when I started, and I appreciate a big shout out to Terry, who introduced me to a lot of the groups. Um, when I reached out to him and, and because the AI was a topic. Uh, one of the things I'm going to tell you is sometimes people might be overwhelmed. Uh, don't be overwhelmed by the technology. Uh, we'll, we'll start using it and I'll show you the ways how to use it um, in a better uh, format. One of the things that people always ask me this question is, is AI going to replace my job? AI is not going to replace the job that you're doing, but it will replace a lot of the things, like the tasks that you're doing. Like if you're doing 15 tasks in your job, maybe four, five, six, maybe in some jobs, 10 of those tasks will be uh, replaced by that person, by AI, right? But at the end of the day, it comes down to like any other things, technology, it's not there yet. And I will do a quick presentation. I'm not a PPT person, but I will do a quick presentation uh, my job is to, if I can get, many people might be in the beginning of their journey with AI. Some of them might be in the middle, some might be an expert. My job here is to create some curiosity and, and make it fun for you guys to use some of the tools and technology available. It is really fun uh, to play with AI. And I'm sure all of you have heard about ChatGPT and the hoopla about it. I, in my opinion, ChatGPT has gone down a little bit. They have some other LLMs. It's like any other, uh, all of us own cars. It takes from one destination to another destination. Um, LLM is similarly like that, right? Some of you might need uh, something, um, a Honda uh, Odyssey, where you might have seven people in your family. You want to go, so you, you might buy an LLM, uh, the car, which is an Honda Odyssey or some might buy a Datsun B210, which I owned uh, 25 years ago when I was delivering newspapers. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, so LLM is a um, tool where a lot of the things have been inputted into it and it, it can give you an output. The difference between Google and the chat GPT or any of those other things, Gemini, Perplexity, Claude, O any of those other things that you would be using on a daily basis. And what I tell people is whatever you're comfortable with, keep using that, right? Uh, there's no right or wrong. I'm not here, there's no compliance issues. If you're not comfortable to put that information in, please don't put that in, right? It's like when we were growing up, our parents told us wear a clean underwear, right? When you go out, it's the same way. If you're not comfortable to put the data in out there, don't put it out there. Um, I have some paid versions, a lot of them are free. And I one of the things I always tell people, I'm a cheap recruiter. I don't spend money on tools. I try to find cheap tools. Um, and as a job seeker, finding a job is a job in itself. And a lot of the companies are using these AI tools already. So if how many of you are familiar with um, the ATSs and how many of you hate them? I'm sure a lot of you raise. And when you're applying for a job, you either you have to go on a work day or teleo, any of those things. Now there are tools which are come into play with AI that you don't need to go and, and apply on, on each of them. It will automatically pull that information. I'm not sure why companies are still using the tedious process of applying um, uh, the long applications. Um, Mindy, I think I can share my screen, right? 
for the presentation. Yes, yes, you should be able to. Any questions? Um, you're able to see my screen, which is unleashing the power of AI automation for job seekers. Yes, we can see it. Too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, again, this is this is AI is going to be a part of our lives. Whatever innovations took place between 1900 to 2000, and in 2000, you heard Steve Jobs came out with that, where you can put thousand songs on a small uh, device and it changed the whole thing. And whatever innovations took place from 2000 to 2022 or 23, I think 2023 to 2027, it will surpass these 122 years of innovation. Uh, that's where we are going to. And unfortunately, what was good yesterday is going to be bad tomorrow. Uh, I always tell people, don't fall in love with the tool, fall in love with the process that you're going to follow. It doesn't matter. So one of the things that we all need to learn is prompting. That's a new word and you will hear prompting, co-pilot and some of those things. Prompting is nothing but asking questions to the computer to give you the answers that you, and then you iterate it multiple times and then you get a better answers. And whatever you can think about, you can ask these LLMs, right? So some of the use cases for job seekers is, I'm not sure, okay. Benefits of using AI automation for job seekers, you can optimize the job matching. Um, uh, if you're applying for jobs, you can tell which of the jobs you're better fit for. I don't advocate to change your resume, right? I don't advocate you to write a customized resume for every job that you apply. You have a basic template and you can change the order of it by using the AI. Some jobs might require a few things that are important. You can highlight some of those things. Enhance user experience. Uh, if, you are, if you want to find out information about a company that you're interviewing with, by using some of these things, you can get that information within five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, which would have taken you about a day, two days to get all that research done. And whatever this chat GPT spits out or Gemini spits out or perplexity spits out or Clark splits out, you still have to humanize it. This is the one part I always tell people, whatever it gives you, um, don't take it and just cut and paste it into something else. Humanize it. There are a lot of tools that are available to see whether what you have written is written by a chat GPT. Uh, there are zero GPTs there. You can take some of the things that chat GPT writes and you can humanize it by putting into humanize.ai and some of the other tools that are available. If anybody wants tools, I have a bunch of tool lists that I can send you for your particular fields. Uh, just reach out to me. Personalized recommendations. How many of you are writing cover letters and summary and all those things when you're applying for jobs? This can really do a very good job of writing those things and, and sending us to job seekers. Efficient sourcing for a recruiter, I can tell you, um, I'm not sure if I need to tell you this or not, but I'm going to tell you from a recruiter perspective. I don't look at any more resumes anymore uh, nowadays because I have a tool that looks at it. How many of you know what, what is this attention span of a recruiter or HR person who looks at your resume? Anybody can give me a guess? I uh, hear they take like six seconds to look it over. Great. So it's, it's, I heard it's eight seconds. Wall Street said some years ago that it's eight seconds. If you don't get the attention span of the recruiter of HR within those eight seconds, you, you're not going to get a shot at it. There's, this AI tool will help you to get that attention, right? And how to summarize it, what can you can highlight into it, and some of those things. I wouldn't pay anything for any of the tools that you are. All these tools are available for free. And if you're not able to do it with one, you will be able to do it with three or four other tools that you can. Uh, nowadays, the word is freemium. They give you five, 10 for free, and then, then you can go subscribe to it. Customized insights. It can give you customized insights about the job. It can give you customized insights about how to interview with that particular. What are the questions that they possibly will be asking? You can get, you can prepare for mock interviews and those type of things with ChatGPT. 
uh, resume screening, personalized job matching, candidate relationship management, automated interview scheduling. How many of you have taken asynchronized video interviews? Where, where you are doing a video interview, somebody has already asked the question and you're just answering. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are, have taken that and have experience with those things. Um, the next part of that iteration is going to be conversational AI. What that means is they can mimic my voice, they can mimic my style, they can mimic my questions and ask as if I am asking those questions. It's called conversational AI bot. Some of you might have already been playing around with it with some of the financial institutions and other things. And it is scary that it can mimic your voice. Um, you might have heard during the election campaigns, few of the things, good and bad things can happen. Um, Whenever technology comes, there will be bad actors, there will be bad things. Uh, I don't, which is not in my control. If you're on LinkedIn, if you bought a house, if you bought, uh, if you got married, if you got divorced, your information is public out there. Uh, let me be very frank with you as a recruiter, I can find out. a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to give my information, but your information is there and you will find a lot. Of One of the things uh, that I tell people doing the AI revolution which is going to take place is create a password among your family members. How many of you have gotten that you have not paid your taxes, the sheriff is coming to hire to arrest you, uh, or you have not uh, done your insurance renewal? Um, and next one is going to be, they will mimic your voice and say, honey, I forgot my ATM password. Can you give it to me? Right? And it is scary to find out that they can mimic you to the exact tone and tonality and the words that you use. Um, and that's where the conversational AI piece is going. I've seen some of them already being used by some of the companies which are playing around with it. And to be honest, it is very scary to think that they can mimic you to that extent. Uh, but create a password among your family members if don't give out all that information until you have a secret passcode. Tips for leveraging AI, stay proactive, utilize feedback, refine your preferences, embrace learning. This is one area that I, I've seen some of Bob Longo is here, uh, who's a training. A lot of the training LMSs and a lot of those things, uh, AI marketing and uh, learning and development, AI can do a very good job. Um, nowadays, I don't read any contracts. If there's a hundred page contract, I can put it into chat GPT or one of the other ones and it can give me a summary of those uh, contract, what terms and conditions are. Addressing concerns and misconceptions about AI automation in job search. I'm sure I get this question every um, conference or every webinar I do. Hey, what about, should I put my correct picture on LinkedIn? Should I do this? Should I change this? Uh, I, at the end of the day, I tell people to be truthful. Uh, whatever your picture is, put your latest picture, uh, put your uh, latest things in there. Yeah, AI can, uh, is there an age bias? Absolutely, there is an age bias. Uh, but what, what AI can do is this. All of us, most of us here have white hair, right? Uh, I have. We can show our experience by using AI and becoming a domain expert into whatever field we are in. And we can answer those questions by embracing the technology. And I'll show you a few examples of it when we run the use cases. Uh, I'll give you an example. I went to a meeting a couple of weeks ago. I did not know anything about the domain. Within 15 minutes to an hour I spent, I could, when I spoke to that person, oh, looks like you've been working in this field for a long period of time. It is scary the amount of information that it can give and in a, in a very concise manner uh, that you can become an expert is, is really scary. Finding the perfect fit, streamlined application processes. If everybody starts using resume to uh, use AI to write their resume, how will the AI find the right candidate? Right? That's a question some of you might have. At the end of the day, when you get that interview, how will you stand out do on that interview is the most important part that I would tell people. You personalize it, you, um, any questions?
I don't see any questions now. The only question, um, uh, there was one question earlier, but the person lowered their hand, so I don't see it anymore. Okay. So uh, we'll keep our eye out for questions. Um, here, are, here are a few things. If you understand the capabilities of AI, like I said, AI is here to stay. Um, unfortunately, a lot of companies hired a lot of people last year, and you heard about the layoffs. They have laid off people, and they are putting money and, uh, and resources into AI and those type of things. Will few jobs be eliminated? Absolutely, it will be eliminated, but few new jobs will be open. So one of the use cases that we will start using is, I will show you when we do the use cases, right? Um, so the technology is here to stay, so embrace it, play around with it. How many of you say that you you are you have never played with AI? If you have a Alexa at home, my wife hates Alexa because in the morning she says, "Good morning, sunshine." <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? It it personalizes you. It tells you. It it knows who's who's talking to her. Um, if you're used to GPS, right? If you're going to the back. To the neighborhood stores, we use GPS. We we don't even. I was talking to somebody and said, I use GPS because I wanted to see if there's any traffic. There's live updates of traffic happening, right? And and it's it is wonderful. Any tool that is being used is because it increases the efficiency, it increases the productivity, and if if you know how to use it, it becomes really uh, powerful. I'm going to stop um, if there are any questions. If I don't know where my Zoom. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Sam, I saw Julie Bruton had a, her hand up. Julie, yeah. are you practicing or do you have a question? Oh, no, <laughs> I was practicing. Uh, no, okay. no, somebody just asked if they were going to have access to this PowerPoint after it was done. And then, um, and then it was Sandra said, oh, no, somebody said it was going to. Uh, oh, Sue said it was going to be on your YouTube channel. So, right. So tomorrow, hopefully, uh, when I post the uh, post about today's event, I will be putting in the nuggets and also the link to the uh, to the replay for sure. But Sam is generously giving us a um, it's a link to an unbelievable amount of data about about AI. And uh, we're going to put that into the chat in a little while to um, give Sam some time to show some demonstrations so you have a full understanding of what he's talking about. How many of you can see my LinkedIn profile? I can see that, Sam. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me just... Oh, so now Julie's raising her hand. Sandra, did you have a question? Oh, no. I was just raising my hand to to indicate that I could see the screen. Thank you. Oh, okay, perfect. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to show you all the four, five main ones of LLMs that we are. The, the most popular one most of you know is either ChatGPT or, and there was a volunteer here who generously told me that I can share this content with, with the whole time. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and she sent me her resume, and I'll, I'll run one more use case. We will have time to run more, one more use case, uh, different prompts and different things. Uh, but before we run, I will run one in perplexity. Just let me know if you see my perplexity screen. Yes. Okay. Act as an SME and tell me how AI is going to affect my role as a project manager in pharma and pharmaceutical. So this is perplexity. It has a little bit more research capability. Um, so it is telling me as whatever role you are in, this is one of the prompts that you should run. Act as a subject matter expert, as a career counselor, and tell me how AI will affect my job and what is the changes that will happen in the next 
three months, six months, nine months, and then the next prompt you can give is once it gives you what it tells you, then you can go and add. And some in public yes. will also come up with questions. Um, some of the questions that you can ask. And the prompting is very simple. Uh, if you can remember this, act, there are multiple methodologies of prompting and they are available. And I, uh, I've shared a sheet with uh, Mindy. Uh, it will give you a good context of some of the prompt methodologies that can be used. But the basic one is task. What is the task you want to get it accomplished? So if you're talking to a five-year-old, what is the instructions you're giving that five-year-old to get that task completed? And what is the outcome that you're looking for from that task to be completed is what you're going to be putting into, into the LLMs, right? Um, so it is very easy. Act as a financial advisor. I am 58 years old. Tell me what investments I should be putting in. Should I be taking risk or should I not be taking risks? And it will give you a prompt, right? Um, it will give you an out output. And then you can iterate that output and, and refine it and uh, do. And some of the prompts, I already gave it in the cheat sheet. So you guys can, uh, once you get it, you'll be able to play around with it. And one of the things I did tell Mindy, if you, if you need to help, I don't do any paid consulting, but if you need any help, uh, you can reach out to me after 5 p.m. If I'm not traveling, uh, I can get on a Hangout and quickly run some use cases with you in your own thing. And here's what should I do to upskill myself who is a project manager with AI and So it gives you some of those things. So whatever role you are in, you can put that role in and do it. And then it tells you what it is. And you can take the output from one, from perplexity, put it in Cloud, and, and see how it iterates. Can you tell me some of the SMEs that I can follow? on LinkedIn, Facebook, Insta, YouTube to upskill myself. Again, if you notice that when I'm typing the the, my the is always T-E-H for, um, um, I'm not sure if I'm dyslexic or what it is. But I, I, Facebook spelling is wrong, YouTube, right? But it understood what I was because it's, it knows me from the past using so many, right? So it tells me that these are some of the experts that I should be following in my field. Um, and if you start following them on any of the channels that you are familiar with, you will be able to do some of those things. So here is one of the perplexity, any questions? Questions, we're looking for raised hands if you have a question for Sam. Hi, this is Stacy. I have a question. Hey, Stacy. Sam, how can you be sure that all of the information that's being returned to you is actually correct? It is, I'm not sure, but, but there is an, so any LLM, it, you may or may not, but at the end of the day, it's like finding any information from anywhere, right? Uh, you have to make sure that it is correct or right. And then you take it and do multiple iterations in different formats and and check it and verify it. Okay. But it gives you a best possible answer. So one of the things, Stacey, I would do is things that you already know that is correct, right? I will take those things that I know, put it into the chat GPT or perplexity or Gemini or Cloud and see what answers it's giving out. And then verify it. So anything that you get, you, you should make sure that it is verified. Don't cut and paste it. See if it makes sense. See if you can find the, in, in this one, it also tells you where the source came from. So you can go and verify the mm -hmm. source. Okay, great. Thank you. 
Right. M Michelle's hand is raised first and then Patty's after Michelle. I, I was just going to say that I use Grammarly a lot, um, especially from my resume, and they have a disclaimer at the top um, or at some point it says, you know, there is no guarantee that the information you're receiving is 100% correct. Every yeah. Everybody has a disclaimer, like when you go to the financial advisors, they say, hey, somebody made a billion dollars, but not everybody made billion dollars. It, it is dependent on individuals. If you do your tax returns, they, the tax preparer says, I'm preparing the tax returns from the information that you gave me, right? And, and so everybody has a disclaimer, including chat GPT and all these places. So, um, but with certainty, you can tell depending on a lot of the information that you, things that you can test yourself with. Right. Patty, you're next. Yes, thanks, Sam, for providing this uh, overview, um, especially using perplexity, which I haven't used very much. Um, what or how up to date is the source files on this? It's from what I understand, ChatGBT, that they only go through September of 2021. And that if you ask it anything more recent, it doesn't know. So um, be careful for your source data and how relevant it is. So ChatGPT came up with uh, multiple versions that they have given access to a lot of people for, for Omni is, is the latest one, even for the free version you will be. And that data is almost current. And if you have paid version, then, then the data is current. And uh, past week, they, they released the search GPT, uh, which is which they are trying to displace Google, right? So within that, um, I'll show you there a great question I'll show you uh, when I use chat GPT, I'll show you that part of it where you can see what data is and when it's available. And, and people ask me, when should I use what? I, I tell at the comfort level that you use, all of these are free, use all of them, see which one of those you're getting comfortable with and which one you like and, and start driving that car, right? That's, that's all I can tell. And I do like perplexity and Claude but, uh, more than chat GPT. I, I like Gemini the least, but Gemini, because my organization is Gmail, um, so I have a lot of to do. So Gemini helps me with that part of it because they are uh, bolted onto a lot of the Google uh, things. Sam, can you get into the um, demonstration of the chat that we were talking about? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm getting right there. Perfect. So I'm, for that, I'm using chat GPT. So I just wanted to use some of the, so here, act as an SME and review this resume and break it down in simple terms what this person does and break down the skills and also alternate titles that I can find similar folks. I'm coming from a recruiter perspective. I just got Michelle's resume. I did not know much about oncology and those type of things. So I'll be very honest with you. I didn't have any idea what this was. So it reviewed the resume. I, I pasted the resume in of Michelle. Um, since for time, like the cooking shows, I just did it and kept it ready. Uh, but if I can share the chat here uh, and, and the uh, things. And so it broke it down. Michelle, I'm not sure if you looked at the one I shared with you, how correct, how accurate this was. But, but from what I read, it looked like it broke it down into what you, your role is, is and what you do. You're yeah. a business development and partnership building person. Um, you're in sales leadership, product expertise and market insights, strategic initiatives uh, in oncology, diagnostics and genomic, uh, business development, strategic sales and negotiation, product lifecycle management, communication, program development. Uh, that's what you do, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And the alternate titles that a lot of people are not, sometimes a lot of people um, are struggling in the jobs that I see that I'm, I'm a business development person, but somebody can be calling that person business development. Somebody can could be calling them account manager. Somebody can be calling. So you can ask ChatGPT to give you alternate titles and you can take those titles and put into LinkedIn or any of the job boards and see if you're able to find more jobs for you, right? So it gave me 10. If I, if I have asked for 20, it would have given me 20 job titles. The more you ask, the, the, the 
precise questions you asked, ChatGPT has the ability to give you those. If I say, give me 20 titles, it will give me 20 titles, right? And she also was gracious enough to share the three jobs that she was applying to. I cut and pasted those jobs. Those jobs are, the links are right here. Um, so you can see I did not do anything. Uh, I pulled out from her thing and I took, took that use case. Uh, where is my check? Okay, here. I took the three jobs. I, I, I put it, I put the three jobs in that she shared with me. I just cut and pasted the jobs. The paid version, you can attach a file. Um, and even in the free version, I heard that you can start. So it broke it down into a table format for me because I said break it down into table format. Here's the first breakdown of the regional oncology specialist. Requirement was this match level was a strong comments. And it, it analyzed those resumes and the job and gave me and, and told me Overall, it's a strong fit, potential gaps, territory familiarity with Mid-South is what Michelle was lacking. Additional, Michelle is well suited for this role, especially with her extensive oncology, general diagnostic experience, only minor adaptation may be needed to familiar herself with the specific territory. Let's proceed with the next job. Uh, she did two jobs, same thing. Same thing, it compared the jobs. I could have even written a prompt saying, can you compare all the three jobs in, in a table format and give it to me in one shot? It would have compared all the three jobs, looked at her resume and given me which one and comments for each job and compared all the three jobs in one shot and put it into a table format. And this is the third job. That's amazing. So after doing that, it I asked it, so it also ranked the job for me, right? Recommendation, senior oncology account manager, best fit due to strong alignment with oncology sales, territory management, and compliance experience, right? It also told me which of the three jobs that she's a better fit for. Regional oncology, she's a good fit. Only minor adjustment needed for regional familiarity. Account management, moderate fit. Additional knowledge in Microsoft solutions and digital transformation would strengthen Michelle's candidacy. Michelle, have you played around with it? Have you seen it? Uh, people can see how you can use this. I play around with it in just when I'm doing job searches and it'll say you are a strong match for this position and I'll click on ask it why and it'll tell me <clears throat> and then it'll also tell me what I should elaborate on in an interview in order to have a more well-rounded background for that position. So I have played with it a little bit but not to this extent. Yeah. So I said I'm, I'm completely new to this field. Michelle might know, what should I do to upskill or reskill myself with the advent of AI and the threat it possesses for my role? Can you give me a detailed breakdown of those? So when you're going to the jobs, you can even brush up on some of these things and say, I know that AI is gonna play a big part in the role that I'm gonna be inheriting or getting into. And I have started to look into some of these things. So that gives the employer the, the thing that, yeah, she's ahead of the curve. She's being proactive. She's trying to get ahead of the curve and do what she's needed to do. And if the other candidate who they're interviewing has not said that, now you will, you will stand out for that employer uh, because now you are getting prepared for that interview in, in a very proactive manner and showing your expertise and marrying the oncology and the sales and the AI tools that you can use to to, to adapt to that new role that you would be fit into. And they know that they don't have to spend too much time and money to get you to the new role with the AI advent, right? So that's, that's the advantage when you ask that question, how will my role change in the next three months, six months, a year? And what should I be doing? And where can I go to get myself upskilled or reskilled? 
and this is what happens. It gave us all these things that she can go. And since I do not, can you help me with some free AI tools that can help me with my career? And it gave me sales intelligence and lead generation uh, tools that I can use. Some might be paid, some might be customer relationship management, HubSpot CRM, Zoho CRM, communication and presentation. Uh, Michelle already said that she's using Grammarly. Um, Otter AI to take your notes, uh, to get on a call um, and, and transcribe. Market research and competitive analysis. Uh, learning. Can you give me more? Um, I can tell you this without any hesitation. Be nice to that to that LLM. If you use please and thank you, it will give you much better results. Uh, and, and I, heard, people, I heard that. That was my first question to Sam. Is it true that you have to be nice to chat? And absolutely. He said, yes, the other 100%. day I had a fight with my wife and I said, hey, can you, can you tell me what should I do? And it said, sorry, I cannot help you yet. And I said, I'm desperate need of help here. Can you please help me? I would really appreciate if you can do it. And then it spit out boom, 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 15 different things, right? I, I and, and that's something that you should do. Hey, can you tell me more? It's, it's like having a conversation with somebody, right. right? It's exactly, and be nice to it and see. When, when you're nice, when you smile at somebody, they smile back at you. It's the same thing. Smile at the thing and ask the questions and use please and thank you, and you'll get better results. Right? Here is just one use case I've taken. You can take this, and I can share this. Michelle, if you're okay with it, I can share this. There's no personal information here. I can share that with the crowd, and, and they can go and click and look at the prompts that they used. If not, I can send you the prompts separately. No, this is fine. I'm, I'm happy to share. I had a quick question for you. Please. Um, so... Does it look at your education information? Because I'm currently enrolled in an IT class or an AI class, AI and pharma and biotech. So it was shows that, that I'm being was, proactive in that way. Yeah. Was that on your resume, Michelle? I believe it was. If it was there, then it looked at it. Okay. Whatever okay. it was on the resume, it looked at it. Okay. And then if you want to clarify it, you can even put a prompt saying, when you put that instruction, you can say, you know what? I'm just starting to take this education because I want to upskill myself. I want to be on top of the trends. And this is these are the two courses I enrolled in. So it will give that weightage less and not use it as an experienced person, right? So, and the answers will be, uh, it will adapt to the answers that it can give out. So being clear with those instruction and telling exactly what it is, I tell, if you go to a lawyer or if you go to a doctor, you're going to give. Same thing, if, you're being, if you tell your situation exactly how it is, it will give you those right answers. If two people are using the same instruction, it will give you two different answers. And people ask me that. It is because it has adapted to your style. And it has, if you see this memory updated, mm -hmm. It, it is, it is, that is what it is doing, right? It is, it is updating its memory all the time. The more you use it, it will start getting used to your style and, and, and parts of it. Sam, I have two questions. Go ahead. Um, one is if I were to put in the LinkedIn URL, in addition to the, in addition to the resume, let's say for Michelle, for example, would that, would ChatGPT be able to discern, you know, where there might be some differences or some additional information? If you are on a paid version, I'm not sure on the on the free version, Michelle, uh, Mindy. On the paid version, I could do it. Okay, perfect. Um, but but I will show you one other thing since since here uh, we are. So I wanted to become an expert in the field, and I want to upskill myself. I want to understand which are some of the groups. Whatever I did in perplexity, I said I want to follow people on LinkedIn. Insta, Facebook, YouTube, and it gave me some of the things. Michelle, I'm not sure if you know these things. National Cancer, PubMed, clinicaltrials.gov, MedSpace, right? It, 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 and it told me these are some of the people I can follow to upskill myself in oncology and at least keep up with the trends. Facebook, Facebook groups and pages, YouTube channels that I can follow. 
general oncology and business development pages on LinkedIn, oncology, venture, pharma, intelligence. I okay. took some of this information and I, since I said I'm, I do not know this the first time I'm even doing this, I took that information and I'll show you what I did on YouTube. Right here is my LinkedIn. I didn't attach the LinkedIn. I didn't want to, I didn't know whether it had. So I just put her title and I say, how can I enhance my LinkedIn profile? And some of the headlines that she had there, um, it said current extensive experience. It said suggested include an engaging headline and it gave me a suggestion. Oncology, market development, genomics, molecular pathology expert, advanced precision medicine and diagnostic and healthcare. Right? It gave me suggestions for some of those things. In the about section, it told me what all things I can do, what I can change to to the, are you lying? No, you are trying to make sure that your profile is picked up on the top. And, and I tell everybody, you should be engaged on LinkedIn if you are in the job market. Get engaged with the groups, get engaged with the, uh, even if you go like a, uh, something somebody posted or a job that you'd like to share, and do some of those things that the your profile will keep going up and up in, in the uh, thing. Here is what that gave me uh, from what it is. And, and I've shared this with Michelle already. Um, and it is a lot more information than what I could have gleaned in about 15 minutes. It took me 15 minutes, Michelle. That's amazing. So, It'll take me hours to read through it. Which, yeah. is, which is wonderful that it gives you so much. And I will show you a tool to 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 even reduce your reading lot lot to, uh, in a concise way. It will summarize what all we took, right? So, yes. Lori, Lori, just so everyone knows, Lori just put the link to the cheat sheet that Sam was talking about. There are a ton of prompts in that cheat sheet. I suggest you uh, get into that and. Um, Go right into the chat and you can download that that cheat sheet that Sam has so generously given to everyone. There's a lot of information in there. And also there was a question about saving the uh, the chat. You have to hit the three dots at the top. Yeah, right here. Right chat. here. If you go to this top sh which part of it, you can share that chat with anybody. As soon as I hit that share thing, I will get a copy update link and I can take that and share it with anybody. And they can look at the prompts that you use. They can, they can go log into their own account and play around with it. And they can do what they need to do to enhance that part of it. Any questions? I'm, I'm sure some of you are overwhelmed, but if you are, please don't uh, reach out to me anytime. I'll, and I, I, I have maybe five minutes or 10 minutes. I have a few other things that I want to quickly show some of and expose you to some of the things that are available there. We um, have a question from uh, Maru. Right. Maru, can you unmute um, yourself and ask your question? Or if you are not able to unmute, you can type it in and then I can answer it. So here is something that, uh, again, there are tools available. Um, I'll show you this one for, uh, first. Um, Claude, 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 uh, Instagram, okay. There is an AI tool for anything and everything that you do, right? And, and that website is called, there is an AI for that, right? I, I have shared that information with, with people. Don't get caught up with the tools because tools are gonna be changing every day. Uh, I'll give you an example. In March this year, when I started, they were about, 16,000 tools available, um, uh, 1,600 tools available. Today, there are 30,000 tools available. So don't mm -hmm. get used to the tools. Find a way to get, get some of the things that you like for what you want to do, and you will be able to search here and find the tool for yourself. And if you're having trouble, just send it to me. I, I, I curate some of those things, so I will get some of those things. One of the websites I will, and whatever I'm telling you is all free. You do not need to pay anything to do any of these things, right? I'm not showing anything which which you. Um, so this is this is a tool. Um, I'm sh I'm using my recruiting skills to show some of these things that you. One of the things that I always want people to start using is Notion.so. It is free, 
it's 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 a little different than Google. Um, as a job seeker, one of the things I see when I call a candidate is they do not know which job they applied for. They're scrambling to find out. Um, and some of them are organized, some of them are not. And then they, they the one chance they got to uh, get that interview and move forward, they blow it, uh, right? Because they don't know which job they applied for. This will organize you. So if, if I want to, it's notion.so. And, and you can find and you can, you can start in the last six months. This is all the things that I have collected myself. So if somebody asks me, hey, can you find me a tool? I can quickly search here and find the tool and send it to them, right? So here are the top AI tools uh, that I curated from someplace, right? Job search AI tools, right? It, 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 it's, this is only for job search. Right. So <clears throat> if somebody wants, right, I can share this with that person. Uh, I'll put it in the chat here. I'll, I'll, kinda, I'll send it to you, uh, Mindy. Um, right. So there is the tool available. Uh, LinkedIn, I won't, I will, I will, this is the other one that I told you. I'm, I'm just going to have some fun here. My wife likes Mickey. It's a birthday. Can you wish my wife a happy birthday in the Mickey voice uh, in, as Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I'm just... Ah. Um, Oh, hey. okay. It didn't want to do it, right? So that's why I said some of it has already incorporated some of those things. Let me go to chat GPT and then see if, if I can circumvent it. Mm -hmm. Let's see if uh, I, uh, Claude didn't do it. Let's see if complexity will do it. Again, this is how I test. I don't, I just play around with a few things. Yeah. So some of the things I hear. Here is something that I want to show you guys. And here is something I did not know about oncology. So one of the things that so I went to that YouTube channel, I looked at it. I didn't want to spend 50 minutes to go through that YouTube video. I told it, I use a tool to summarize that video. I didn't, it gave me a transcript of that video and that tool is called Merlin.ai. Right. I take this transcript, I can go and go at that prep moment and look at it, right? I copy the transcript, I come back into, let's use Claude. Can you give me more details from this transcript? I just pasted the transcript and then it will give me all that information. So I used it to summarize it and then I went back and then put that information into one of the LLMs and then I can now know more about it and how it is and what it is, right? So that's the summarizer tool. So if you go and, and search for summarizer tool, you will find 10 million ones. Don't pay for anything, please. Uh, get the free one. You can use you can use Merlin dot. Uh, right. Um, how many of you here go use Facebook and Instagram and those type of things? Yeah, okay. So here is this is how I collect my information on tools and technologies. Right. Once 
because everything is based of algorithm. How many of you have gone look for a shoe or a, a flight ticket and then it comes back and tells you, hey, the shoe, it keeps bombarding. My, my feed is completely filled with hawker shoes because I went and looked for one and then it's now, it's right. So I, I have a duck, duck go that you can go to so it doesn't track your cookies and those type of things. Or I tell people to go in the incognito mode and search for flight tickets. Uh, as soon as you search for flight tickets, what happens? It comes out, oh, the flight you look for is going up in price, $50. $50. It's all artificial marketing. They tell you to, it's human psychology that they play with. It's all algorithmic based. So here is, um, I'll just show you five free tools. Nobody is nobody's talking about, right? I go and save it. I'm going to go, go into, I use Instagram only for that. I don't use it for anything else. Right? Um, but I'm, I'm going to go look at all the feeds that I've saved in my Instagram. Because I have too many windows open, it's slow. So you just saw that I saved it here. You just saw it. I, I said, so if I need to go look, somebody calls me and says, hey, I'm, can you tell me an alternate for chat GPT? I can click on this picture, send it to them. This many alternates for chat GPT. And again, it's not, right? So there are multiple tools. Here is the one thing that I will show you guys. Um, Sam, I'm just going to stop for a second. This is yeah, so yeah. interesting. And I just want to recognize that we're going over a little bit. Um, if you can stay and you'd like to stay, please do. Uh, Sam, about how much more do you have to share? I have only two more minutes. Okay. Two and more then, minutes. I, then I can take some questions. Okay. So, again, like I told you, I just want to build a curiosity in you to see what it is and, and, and give you a different thought process. And if you have, again, one hour is not enough to do any of these things, right? Yeah, I, I think Sam is so much interested in this that we need to bring you back. What do you think Absolutely. about Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure by the time we bring you back, everything will have changed a lot. Yeah, somebody's, I'm going to be doing a three sessions continuously alternate <laughs> for three weeks. So uh, again, this is a fast people search. If you go and, and do it yourself, you'll be able to put your name and your state where you are, you will be able to find all the information where you lived, what are the phone numbers, uh, who all are your, who all are in your family, and those type of things. Uh, any other questions? Any other things? Uh, again, I just scratched the surface. I just wanted to expose you to a few things. Um, this has been amazing. Thank you, Sam. Um, I'm kind of aging myself, but. Do you recall the days where you had to look in the classified ads and then go in person, ah! fill out an application? And then you look at this and how far we've come in really just one or two decades. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, so absolutely. It is. So I can get 20 hours of work done in about 10 hours mm -hmm. or, or less than that, to be honest. So here's my name. Here's my real name. This is my age. This is my current address. These are the addresses that I lived in, um, right? And, and, and there is phone number. This is my wife's name, my kids' names. Everything is here. It's public information. Oh, These Sam, put a blocker on that. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a recruiter. I'm, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> right? But always people tell me that, yeah, so if you applied for jobs or anything, I... Again, we can dig deep into, we have paid tools to dig deep, but without paid tools and free ones, you can do a lot more, right? This is, this is how I find phone numbers and things about people and other, other things. So always people tell me, oh, they will know my age if I put it, I know your age. <laughs> I'm calling, I'm knows. Sam right. knows everything. Yeah, it's, it's not just me, it's all the recruiters know, right? It's, uh, um, any other questions? I'm going to stop here. Um, I think I covered everything. Um, one, one thing that I will show you, um, I, I have a goal setting with my team. Um, I use something called 
magical or and i say i just want to reply i didn't even read the email right it just it just sent it wrote an email for me it's amazing the tools that are available nowadays right uh, yeah. if i didn't like that email response i can do my own i can i can i can discard it right i just i have multiple ones i use magical i use uh, uh same thing with linkedin i i go when i look at a post when i like it i it it can it can write the responses back to those people and the one thing i will tell you all of you once you find anything humanize it uh one quick thing i will show you um whatever is written by chat gpt you can take into humanize.ai or undetectable.ai and paste it there and it will tell you that yes it will humanize it it will write it as 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 the human wrote it and then you will be able to take that and and do whatever it is um i use it for emails i use it for uh i have if i show you how many tools i have i have about 100 tools that i use on a daily basis uh to to get my work done Mindy, I'm not sure. Uh, my presentation was so overwhelming. No questions. It's or... overwhelming. So, Sam, can you take down your share, please, so we yeah. can see everyone? I have a question. Oh, we have a question. Hey, everyone. I don't know if it was answered because I had stepped away from my gym. Um, so I use my resume a lot when I do. I'm sorry. I do. I use ChatGPT a lot. Humanized feature. And to update my resume, do recruiter scan your resume? But when I scan my resume, I'm not lying. It's basically what I actually did in my past job just to make it look more, much better. But someone said, oh, stop using ChatGPT because uh, recruiter is rejecting you because they have something. They scan your thing. So what I do, I try to make it ATS friendly. So what is your thought on that? my thought is anything that you do you can make it ats friendly you can do any of those things but you should give personal touch at the end of whatever it is written and i'll i'll give you that secret from the recruiter side when when i get a resume my ats is already looking at your resume and saying that uh, jones sent the resume last month it was a different resume and it will show highlight to me all the things that you changed in your resume um there is a trick a lot of the uh, terry might know this there are a lot of people who use the whitening skills in their in their profiles because they were not getting interviews so they in the word they go and they dumped all the keywords into their resume and it's called whitening effect right and they they whitened their their uh things and when the ats uh the picked up it picked up the resume but when a human looked at it they couldn't see any of those keywords that that they were looking for and and it happens right um we are trying to scam the system the system is trying to scam us at 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 the end of the day we have to meet at a happy ground i would not change the resume per se right you can you can you can make it ats friendly you can do some of those things and there are a lot of tools available to to see if it is ats friendly um i will tell you one i don't want to scare all in your few because um a lot of my clients and i've heard it on there there is a uh you will hear this word more and more going forward it's called copilot there is people are using external help to do their interviews what do i mean by that there is a tool called final round ai dot yes um, I'm aware of it. <laughs> some of you already what was what was that called again final round ai okay so you can feed your job you can feed your resume and it joins you on the on your interview now you have to become the presidential candidate's reading from a teleprompter right you have to be good at reading from a teleprompter right and and it joins the interview and it says hey mindy can you tell me a little bit about yourself it looks from your resume and the job description and it says yeah i'm i was i'm running this group for the last 5 years since covid i've been running it every week this is what it is and this it customizes the answer and, and and people are reading those answers 
And I can tell you since I'm in IT, there is a lot more fraud in IT. Wow. Um, and I can see a lot of people doing that. Um, is Are you guys able to detect that when they do that? Yeah, yeah, because you can tell that their, their eye, eye movements go back and forth and we use some of the tools to catch their eye movement, what they're looking at and stuff like that. But but again, it's 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 we're no longer recruiters. We now become detectives and we now become But uh, I think I think interviewer is catch up with that because I had an interview early the, last week. The interview say, forget everything about your resume. Tell me about yourself. Tell me who that's you it. <laughs> I, I never ask questions from the top. I always go from the bottom of the resume because every recruiter is used to, uh, tell me about the last three jobs that you have, right? So I tell, I go from the bottom. I always say, hey, tell me, it looks like you went to North Carolina State University. Now, why did you get into project management? And how did you progress from your job from Bristol MySquip to, to Pfizer now, right? And, and then they they are not used to that format of asking questions. Uh, they can't really, they are not prepared for it. And then you sprinkle in some of the personal things that they have done, that the hobbies and things, and you catch them off guard in, in terms of how, how because they, every recruiter is asking in a certain format and every candidate is prepared to answer in that format. Right? So, be, <laughs> so that's from a recruiter perspective. So when me and my colleagues talk, it's funny that we, we it's like going to, um, I don't know, the America's Funniest Videos, when we recruiters sit, we, we talk about candidates, what they did and didn't do, right? <laughs> so, Sam, I just want to clarify, because the question was, yes, as a recruiter, or whatever system you're putting it through, can the yes, system can detect. detect that um, I created my resume in ChatGPT as opposed to doing it in some other way? Can right. it detect it, that? It can detect some of the tools are there out there to detect it. And it will also tell me what percentage it detected, what percentage it was. Okay. Good to know. Use it to help want. you and customize it to whatever you can do to so that it's not. So uh, one last tool that I had used last, it called Quibbo. I used to use it when I was in college to check for plagiarism. So I look at my resume that are waiting before ChatGPT, it's a 100% human. So then when I go to ChatGPT, it's a 100% AI. So I go back, I kind of reword it to make it look more human. Then it will say, okay, 20% AI. So yeah, yeah it could there, there are a lot of tools available and a lot of these big companies have invested heavy into that. They have their dollars to spend on those things. Uh, but for small companies, they don't like we are an agency. We don't have unlimited funds to try all these things. Uh, we try to do with some of the free tools available. Yeah. All right, Sam. Where are you, sir? This has been amazing. Um, I would like to invite you back for sure. And we'll let a couple of months go because I know there's going to be some a lot of updates and things of that nature. But I am so excited to see the opportunities. Um, I think we're all aware of some of the things we need to be aware of. When Sam showed his uh, personal information on the screen like that, anyone can get a hold of your personal information. Be aware of that, please. Be aware of scams. Uh, job seekers are a target for scammers. Please use common sense. If someone is asking you to send money, that's a no-no. We're yeah. never going to be sending money in advance for a job. I, as a matter of fact, I had a client who called me and said, um, I got this great opportunity, but they want me to send 1200 bucks for a computer. What do you think? I think you probably have a computer and I don't think you need theirs. And that sounds like a scam to me. So please be aware. Please use these tools. There's so many of them. Make yourself um, smart about what you can use and what you cannot. You saw how many things that Michelle learned about her own job search in just a few minutes. Um, so I hope that you all take advantage of it and hopefully you know, open your eyes to what's out there because we can't avoid it. It's coming. It is coming. It and is I'm, coming. If it's I'm not here already, it's there. If I'm, I'm not sure if I shared my details, I think I shared it earlier in the chat. You did. You have it. You have it. If anybody wants to reach out to me, the best way to reach out is text me or call okay. me. I'm not an email person. I'm not 
Or if you put a message on LinkedIn, if you're connected with me, I will look at the LinkedIn, I will respond. If I'm not traveling, um, I will respond uh, within 24 hours. Yes, his um, information is on the cheat sheet that we provided in there, and you can find him on LinkedIn, super easy. Sam Avellu. Thank, Thank you, you very much for the opportunity. Don't forget to join us in December, December 10th, uh, to see Brenda Miller, who is amazing as well. Uh, a little different topic, but... This has been great. Sam, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you on behalf of all the participants who came to join you today uh, for sharing your wealth of knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mindy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving. Sam, thank, you, thank you, Sam. Thanksgiving to everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sam and Mindy. Bye. Save oh, the chat, the top other. buttons. Oh my, I think it's not